Welcome to today's virtual worship service for February 14th, 2021. It's Valentine's Day, and it's our annual Mardi Gras jazz worship service here at East Brentwood Presbyterian Church, located in the greater metropolitan area of Nashville, Tennessee. My name is Lindsay Hines Brown, and I'm the Director of Faith Formation here at EBPC, and on behalf of our pastor, John Hilly, and our music director, Nate Strasser, and everyone at EBPC, I give thanks for your presence with us today. Now, if this was a typical year, our sanctuary would exude revelry and play with sparkling beads and masks of purple and green and gold with feathers and jewels. But it isn't a typical year, is it? Our traditional pancake brunch is now a take-home brunch in a box and our jazz service is one focused on rest and repair. Yet it is, we give thanks that amidst all the changes and the disruptions that we can join together in worship, lifting our voices in song, and loving and offering praise from wherever we are. So today, we continue our series called Loving What is Broken and the Holy Work of Repair. As we join in worship, we explore what needs to be loved and repaired when it comes to our personhood, our relationships, our faith community, our wider community, and our nation, and creation itself. Christ said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. So for the next little bit, I invite you to set aside your distractions and rest in the knowledge that Christ is with us now and always. Let us worship God. This morning, John will be reading a passage from Deuteronomy about the Sabbath and how good it is to center down. I wanted to give us a moment to center ourselves this morning by reading an excerpt from a poem and playing a jazz piece for you. The poem I wanted to read is an excerpt from the Five Quintets. As I read the excerpt, I'll play a beautiful jazz melody from Dave Brubeck's musical, The Real Ambassadors. Be with me, Madam Jazz, I urge you now. Riff in me so I can conjure how you breathe in us more than we dare allow. In our imperfections we advance, trusting in creation's pre-willed chance. Sweet Madam Jazz, in you we are the dance. centering prayer, I invite you to take your hands and place them together as a sign of our integration within ourselves, our community, and the divine. As you inhale, turn your palms upward as if to say, I am. Then as you exhale, Turn your palms down to ground yourself, as if to say, here. Inhale, I am. 
Exhale. O oh, healing God of rest and repair, we welcome your presence with us today. On this day in which so many celebrate earthly love, we give thanks for your great love for us. Despite our brokenness, we take comfort in knowing that you will never leave us or forsake us. Your love is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yet, we acknowledge that on this day, there are so many who are lonely, so many who would like to be with someone but are single, so many who have lost their loved ones to death, mental illness, divorce, estrangement, or division. But we pray this day will be a day to focus on you and your great love, your compassion, and your healing touch. Remind us through word and song that the love we truly can't live without is your agape love, a divine love that is perfect, unconditional, and divine. May your love be a healing balm on hurting hearts today. May we be filled with peace instead of longing, calm instead of chaos, and comfort instead of sorrow. Be with us now and always. Amen. Hear now a reading from Psalm 81, verses 1 through 10. Sing aloud to God our strength. Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. Raise a song. Sound the tambourine, the sweet lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on our festal day. For it is a statute for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. He made it a decree in Joseph. He went out over the land of Egypt. I hear a voice I had not known. I relieved your shoulder of the burden. Your hands were freed from the basket. In distress you called and I rescued you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O oh my people, while I admonish you. O oh, Israel, if you would but listen to me, there shall be no strange God among you. You shall not bow down to a foreign God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. So I brought you out of the land of Egypt, now picking up Again, in the Hebrew scriptures, there are two readings that I will read, one from the book of Deuteronomy and the other one from the creation story in Genesis. These themes of creation out of chaos and uh, um, newness out of exile are so compatible and interchangeable throughout the Hebrew scriptures. Now here are these words from Deuteronomy 5, verses 12 through 15, observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but 
The seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, or you, or your son, or your daughter, or your male or female slave, or your ox or your donkey, or any of your livestock of the resident alien in your towns, so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. So this notion of rest is picked up originally in the book of Genesis. I'm reading just in the end of verse 31, going into the first chapter into the second chapter, verse 3. God saw everything that God had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, a sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that God had done, and God rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. It's February, it's a cold day outside as we record this service. The weather outside is a wintry mix on this February, the shortest month of the year in what can feel like the longest month in the year. It's February 14th, 2021, Valentine's Day, but this day is overshadowed by different times. Uh, we are perhaps into what is the longest ceasing in human history. We are a year into what is perhaps this longest ceasing. There's been a long pause, but has there really? Over this past year, we have understood that life cannot proceed as normal, but I suggest that so much of what we need is to pause from and to face a reset is still operating at a full force with these two things, stress and worry. We are underway with the series we're calling Loving What is Broken and the Holy Work of Repair. Today I invite you to consider how we must rest. Sabbath rest kind. It's important when it comes to loving what is broken and to make possible the healing work of repair. I've titled this reflection today, When the Chaos Gets to Be Too Much, The Lord Said Rest and Gave Us Jazz. I'm looking forward to this, working with Nate here. We're freelancing here as uh, uh, he participates in this reflection because we're in need of rest and we're in need of music. And I find that when life gets out of sort and we need to center down, Jazz can be a turn to. Let me say to set the stage for what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing, what I'm feeling, and it is this, that in this year of ceasing and in this long month of February, I believe many of us are worrying about what we need to do and stressing about what we cannot do. And it can be a futile endeavor. After all, stressing and worrying are what we do when we cannot do anything else at all. Because if we could fix it, we would fix it or figure out their, how to do it. And there wouldn't be any stressing and worrying about it in the first place. It coalesces into so many tangible and intangible forms, stressing us with the it's its ability to upend our lives and the very world we live in. Sometimes it is financial. Sometimes it is personal. Sometimes it is professional. Sometimes it is spe spiritual. And sometimes it's personal and private. And now the recent chaos challenging our nation's democracy and with the race to vaccinate, it is global and total. 
pretty much throwing out every aspect of our lives into some level of chaos. And so these times call to mind the times when the Israelites were in exile. Like the Israelites, we too find ourselves in exile, not necessarily from our country, but from the lives we once knew and perhaps managed, we thought, quite well. Just like they long for order in the midst of chaos, we do as well. The chaos and the worry and the anxiety of exile was the environment, many scholars say, was the context of much of the scriptures. In Genesis and the creation story, thought to have been written in exile, to the book of Deuteronomy, where they're laying down the importance of Sabbath rest. To the prophets like Jeremiah. I want to say something that I want you to think about. This line is sort of like a, a line that sort of forms the foundation of what would be um, the melody in a jazz song. And the line is this, God prepares a space before God fills a space. Nate, so this is a jazz service, so tell me what comes to mind when uh, you hear this line, God prepares a space before God fills the space. When it comes to jazz, we're thinking about a number of different things to make jazz happen. We're thinking about modes and scales and melody and harmony. And for those things all sort of need to come together for jazz to happen. So you have a melody. Mm. It's pretty basic uh, by itself. Then you add harmony. Jeremiah has taken this line, is there a balm in Gilead? Is there rest in Gilead? Then the African-American spiritual picks it up and says, it's not is there, but there is a balm in Gilead. And then to that chaos of weeping and desperation comes the creativity that happens. Lovely, thank you, Nate. I think this idea that God creates a space before God fills a space is there in the creation story as well. It is thought to have been written in exile just as Jeremiah was written in exile. Each day, space is created to be filled by light, water, and land. Then by fish and by birds, by animals, by humans. Each day, there is a pronouncement, it was good. And at the end of the sixth day, it was very good. Good. And then in Genesis 1:29 comes the proclamation. God saw everything that God had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. God rested, and we are to rest as well. Now I could go off and talk for quite a while about how did you notice that evening happens before morning? instead of morning and then evening. And so God's creative work, I could go in another sermon to talk 
and say how God's creative work happens at nighttime. And that is a time when stress and anxiety can overtake us and we have sleepless nights. And so we must say, if we believe that there is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole, that we can sleep in peace then and turn it over to God's creative and restorative work. God rested and we are too as well. So rest, what am I talking about here? Is that which nurtures an attitude while working or when we are sleeping, when otherwise we are tempted to just stress out and worry. A rest that we desperately need during this time, a rest that is grounded in God's faithful track record. You've experienced it before, of something good in the midst of chaos. And I love what Raquel Letsom says about that creation story that I had read before getting into the sermon. There is always a separation before a habitation, preparation before manifestation. It's no accident that human beings are created last because God had to get the space ready because God will clear out a space before, again, God fills a space. God does these things so that the new thing God is creating is not crowded out or gets confused or commingled with the old stuff that God is presently trying to get rid of in our lives. That means the, the nothing we are looking at of what could be is the precursor of the new something that God is about to do. So the next time that we find that we cannot sleep, the next time we find that we cannot buy it or build it or bring it, believe in the one who can make all things new. And when you can't find it or figure it out, believe in the one who can form and fashion it from the fragments of your faith. Just like in the beginning, the world began in chaos. And by day six, God had created something good. And indeed, there is also the testimony of our faith as Christians that God took the one who was called the good shepherd who did good works and allowed him to be hung high on the cross for our salvation on a good Friday. God added good and good until chaos happened on that good Friday and out of chaos and cruelty and confusion on the cru crucifixion Early Sunday morning, it was all good, and out of chaos became a new creation. So in light of this affirmation, God is able to handle your home, your heart, your health, your relationships, and marriages. God is able to handle your body and your babies and your money and your opportunities. God can handle your life, whether it be in this world or in the world to come, because God is not only the master of fixing broken pieces, but when life breaks stuff into smithereens until there's nothing left at all, when life doesn't give us anything except broken pieces to work with, be sure and certain that God can create something new out of nothing at all. Even when life doesn't give us anything except broken pieces to work with, trust this. So I invite you to rest in this affirmation. Again, God prepares a space before God fills a space. So a rhythm of rest can be such a space that God prepares to fill with God's goodness. So I've given you a couple of reasons to rest, to reset in this time of ceasing, to not give ourselves over to stress and anxiety, to open ourselves up to the creative and restorative activity of God who seeks to fill the space with God's divine love. But here's one more reason why we need to rest. It is because all creation needs to rest too. We must rest because 
all of creation, not just you, not just me, not just us, desperately needs rest too. So often our vision of creation extends no further than we individuals who are singled out and we refer to ourselves as maybe special. And in the most individualistic ways that we can conceive of that word special, special because we are created in God's image, special because we have been given stewardship over creation, special because of our faculties and our abilities and our competencies, and then special because everything that can benefit us gives us pleasure or what we can use. And if we are not careful, we end up never resting from wanting and needing and desiring until we have continually moved with activity and needs and wants and impulses such that no one gets rest. The Amazon delivery guy or Mother Earth. And so it would be interesting if we take rest seriously. Do we take pause from the inclination to point and click and have on our doorstep any time of the day what we feel like we want, not necessarily what we need? And what does it mean if we give creation rest? We have known over the last year how the water is running clearer, the air is cleaner because we have pulled back in this ceasing and creation is about the work of repair. That's why they wrote in the book of Exodus and Deuteronomy about the need to have a Sabbath rest, to remember that you once were a slave and if you're always on and wanting more, then there is no rest for the animal or the slave, nor is there time for you to focus upon that which is holy and that which is at the source of your life. And Sabbath rest is an antidote. It is a vaccination. It is a reset against the drudgery of that which stresses us and makes us anxious and the drudgery of slavery. And in this time, with Easter on its way, and the lit to get to of the 40 days before we get to Easter, that that maybe is a rhythm that you can discover. To where we learn how to be human beings and not just human doings. Because I think it's time for us to rest from the fretting and the worrying and the stressing about all that we feel we cannot do and all that we feel that we need to do and survey what we have done and examine how we have done it and honestly access if we need to keep doing it the way we have always been doing it. So rest. Because rest follows creating. But rest is also needed in the holy work of repair. We can rest knowing that God is working in the midst of all of this chaos. So let us rest our minds and our spirits and let us reevaluate this Lent, what is essential. So remember, remember that line, God prepares a space before God fills a space. And remember, there is a balm in Gilead. And there's a complexity to that, and a simplicity, and there's an order to that, and so I invite you to rest and to center down. I, I want to leave you with the words of Howard Thurman, a pastor to Martin Luther King Jr. and to the Civil Rights Movement, a, a great spiritual guide, teacher, poet, mystic, who calls us to center down. Thurman proclaims, how good it is to center down, to see one's self pass by. The streets of our minds seethe with endless traffic. Our spirits resound with clashing, with noisy silences, while something deep within hungers and thirsts 
for the still moment and the resting law. With full intensity, we seek air, thicket passes, a fresh sense of order in our living, a direction, a strong, sure purpose that will structure our confusion and bring meaning to our chaos. questions persist. What, persist. what are we doing with our lives? What are the motives that are our days? What is the end of our doings? Where are we trying to go? Where do we put the emphasis and where are our values focused? For what end do we make sacrifices? Over and over the questions beat upon the waiting moment. of our turbulence. There is a sound of another kind, a deeper note, which only the stillness of the heart makes clear. And it moves directly to the core of our being. Our questions are answered. Our spirits refreshed. And we move back into the traffic of our daily round with the peace of the eternal in our step. How good it is to center down. us in the prayers of the people. The psalmist says, our hearts are restless until they find rest in thee, O God. So may we discover this truth. O God, when we have abundance, you give us joy. In deficiency, you give us hope. In life, you give us purpose. When death visits our household, you give us comfort. Your gifts are never ending. Your, per your peace has protected us through every storm. 
your joy has overwhelmed every disappointment. So may we in this prayer, in this time and in this space, open ourselves up to you. Embolden us to expand our comfort zones and embrace life in new ways. Thank you, O oh God. We say thank you for all that you have given us. Our purpose and our praise is to demonstrate our gratitude and appreciation. continue to struggle in this time with this pandemic and the social ills it has exposed. We pray that you would bestow courage to healthcare workers and those facilitating vaccinations. We ask a special measure of wisdom for the leadership of our country at this time and for the world that collectively we may discern the path to bring aid to the afflicted. of your love for those within our churches and in our communities. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So go now in the knowledge that God's agape love is with you even in the moments of brokenness. As we go into the world, may we feel that love through the songs we hear the words we share, and the rest we allow ourselves to experience. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls us to new life, the love of God who calls us back to abundant life, and the communion of the Holy Spirit who sustains us still with every breath we take, be with you now and always. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.